This is the track voted for by the fans, the ultimate circuit. I tell you what, it looks really busy, really technical, high speed in places, a bit of a Frankenstein track in some respects, but... That sure. implies it's ugly. I don't think it is. <laughs> I think this is a thing of beauty. Well, absolutely. And what better place to start than the start of Kota? Yeah, look at that look. I mean, it's always steeper when you're there than it looks. On yeah. The, a bit like Eau Rouge, actually, we'll see later on in the lap, but it's so wide and it generates lots of overtaking and good starts. And I feel like iconic corners take years to earn that status, and yet this went straight in when it came on the calendar in 2012. It was certainly love at first sight for me. I remember walking out on the track and saying, that incline was insane, the bank of fans looking down on it, and then that sharp yeah. uh, 90 degree turn. I like standing up there in free practice too, talking about it, but it's man-made of course, that yeah. hill, because it's very flat around there. And then straight into the legendary Parabolica corner, where I've driven around that so many times. It's, it always surprises you when you get to the end of that straight and hit the brake. So yeah, you're gonna arrive there. Incredible speed into the foot of the hill in Akamenarali, and then the little chicane. And then bang, you're straight into the swimming pool <laughs> at Monaco. Yeah, this that's is intense. Gonna be, that's gonna be a handful. <laughs> yeah. um, so it, it's gonna be really high speed, but you've gotta have your wits about you. Uh, and then you need accuracy, of course, through the, through the swimming pool. Uh, the thing about Monaco is however many times you go, when you see all these people along here, it just brings the intensity to life, doesn't it? I mean, I've never driven it. Just how full on is it? Well, I always say to people, when you go there, try not to get run over, but sit on the track. Don't walk around it. Every so often stop and sit down because that's what it looks like. And all of a sudden the barriers are up here like this and you're focused uh, on this sort of channel and you've got the, the road, the manhole covers, a couple of pavements you have to navigate and all the general street furniture. And you get in a sort of a trance. So all of the people and the boats and the champagne corks flying through the air, you don't really notice. And where do we go into next? Hairpin. Oh, into the hairpin. So we're staying on a street circuit. You I still what? call it the Lowe's hairpin. Is that wrong? Yeah, well, Sir Sterling, bless him, called it Station Hairpin, as it was originally, but it's always been there. And we used to have to use different steering racks uh, and, they, uh, and a little bit faster steering, if you can, to be able to get around there. Wow. And you, had to take, you have to take one hand off the wheel because there's not enough space for your elbow to, to turn the steering wheel. And inside, they're really tight cockpit. And it's full lock uh, in, in a Formula 1 car. A Formula 1 car is the opposite to a London taxi. They've got no steering lock at all because <laughs> of the big fat tyres on the front. So actually getting around there is a bit clumsy. So we've done a high speed first corner in Austin, straight into high speed Italian corners. Then we went we're into a street environment. We're still in a street environment. What well, next? What happens next? Radion. Eau Rouge oh, into Radion. Oh my God, now, here we go. We're up and running again now then. Eau Rouge, the corner I said. It always, every time, I've been going there for 40 years. It's always steeper and tighter than I remembered from the year before. It's incredible up there. And straight into the Kemmel Strait, which yeah. is the longest in Spa. Obviously a very long track itself, but over a kilometre here. Yeah. It didn't used to be straight, did it? You had to lift from the hairpin at Spa. Uh, you go through Eau Rouge, very rarely was it flat out. But now, effectively, it's just a straight line for the, for the F1 cars. But it's a really long climb up the hill. So if you get it wrong, anywhere in Eau Rouge, up through, uh, up the Kemmel Strait into that chicane, it's, you're, you're hauling up there, but you can get a really nice slipstream because that's the famous place where we saw the Schumacher Hakkinen around Zonta uh, moment that sort of sums it up perfectly. Now, of course, you throw bad weather into the mix, which we often see at Spa. Yeah. I mean, just how tough does that make it? Uh, 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 it's really difficult because the rain hangs in the trees as well. I always admire the fans there because it's such a long track. The cars only come past 44 times, if they're lucky, um, rather than 50 or 60 at most tracks. So they're, they're, they're really, they're, they're hardy, the fans that go and camp at Spa. But um, one of the greatest overtakes I've ever seen was in Eau Rouge when Mark Webber came yes. down the outside of the fearless and fearsome Fernando Alonso. Alonso and made it stick. Not many people do that to Ferdi. Beauty to see. Talking right. of beautiful, straight into Baku. Yeah, so we've gone high speed again, boom, straight into probably one of the narrowest 
pieces of racetrack in Formula One history, I would say, because it, it looks, it's definitely one at a time through there, isn't it? Absolutely, and a place where history bites back, because you make a mistake here, and pay the consequences, did. and many have, as you say. Young Charlie Leclerc, he went in there, didn't he? He smashed it. I am it. stupid. Yeah. <laughs> this looks really tricky, this part of the track. I'd love to race on this track, I've never, I've never been around. And bang, so we've gone from this tiny little tight piece into the magnificent uh, Maggots Beckett's Chapel onto the hangar straight. Oh my God, I love driving through there. I've been through there in touring cars, sports cars, single seaters, Formula Ones, everything. And E-type Jags, all sorts of cars. And it's a, it's a brilliant challenge. And you never ever feel you got it quite right. You always feel like you left a little bit of time on the table. Oh, I should have gone in faster. I should have picked up the throttle earlier. But as soon as you do that, you have a moment. So what are we talking here? Controlled aggression going through these corners because it's such high speed. Yeah, we see you're asking a lot of the car because you keep doing the direction change at high speed, but it gets a little, a little bit slower and slower and slower as you, as you go through it. But you've got to release uh, uh, through the final chapel onto the onto the uh, the hangar straight. Otherwise, you just waste time. You waste time through there. But no, it, it's it's a classic one. For me, this is coming home. I mean, this is my earliest memory of Formula One, coming to Silverstone as a, an eight-year-old girl and hearing that noise and that speed, Maggots Beckett's Chapel, they're just iconic yeah. names that yeah. ring in your mind, don't they? Yeah, and because you've got cops before it and Stowe after it, which, to be frank, both those corners could have made it onto this uh, dream circuit. But they didn't because competition was tough. <laughs> so we're flat out then. Where are we going to go into? Ooh, Suzuka. Yeah. Now this really is a section which separates the good from the great. How tough is it to it, nail it's, the S's? I think it's one of the toughest, uh, most technical parts of a racetrack anywhere in the world. And often you'll see drivers struggle for a year or two to dial in just to understand how fast you really can go out the bag. And if you get it wrong through the S's out the back, uh, the pits at Suzuka, you can have a massive crash, massive crash, which I did there once in a Benetton, but that's where Mansell crashed in there, Williams, and, and lost his world championship chance. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's really, you've got, you've got to be pinpoint accurate and brave, and the walls are very close through there. I tell you what, Japan is one of the greatest places to go in terms of the super fan as well. They seem to support every single person on the grid. They're not just fiercely... A partisan to one driver or one team every mm. single driver has got and, and a few commentators and pundits have got a massive fan base out there haven't they yeah they're really into it there was a time where it was like a ballot to get a, a one in eight got a ticket to the grand prix when there was senna mania on and we used to st we stayed in the suzuka circuit hotel and the only way for us to get into the track was a 30 second helicopter ride. Stop it. From the hotel up over and into the paddock and there's he two helicopters going all all through the morning and evening. Believe what we, a diva. We never we this was we could not sure. because the Mobbed. fans were just mobbing this the whole place and looking for it in center. 30 seconds. A 30 second helicopter ride into the track. But that was the only way to get in. Brilliant. Yeah. So talking of Senna, here oh. we are then, the Senna S. Um, Again, another really steep piece of racetrack, but this this is not man-made. This is the topography of this wonderful sort of bowl. So, so we're that, staying with Interlagos. Yeah, Interlagos gets another look in. Yeah. Um, from that tricky little left, that's the long climb up the hill, flat out in the dry, treacherous in the rain. And the scene, of course, of one of the most incredible sporting moments ever, the 2008 Brazilian Grand Prix. So what do you make then of this incredible creation really busy <laughs> a lot of high-speed arrivals into some tricky parts of the racetrack but hey you know these are the best drivers in the world and the finest cars in the world so all doable um you know and the throttle pedal you know goes up as well as down you don't you, can, you don't have to keep it flat out um i i like it i i think it would be breathless as a driver in a Formula 1 car to do that track for a Grand Prix. Come on then, Stefano. Let's build it.
So it's lights out and away we go. The Sky Sports car exploding off the grid at the circuit of the Americas and heading into the magnificent uphill braking zone of Turn 1. Next up, we hurtle into Parabolica, a long sweeping right-hand bend of the Monza circuit with speeds of over 200 kilometers an hour. We stay in Italy for Aqua Minerale at Imola and the Tifosi voted the most passionate fans in our Sky Sports poll. Now to the glamorous streets of Monaco. It's the swim and pool chicane, a rapid sequence of turns and onto the Grand Hotel hairpin, the slowest corner on the F1 calendar. From Monaco to Belgium, Eau Rouge and into Radion, a heart-stopping uphill sequence. Flat out onto the Kemmel Strait and into Le Con, a high-speed section where overtaking is always possible. From the Ardennes Forest to the narrow winding castle section of Baku, a 1.4-mile stretch and the narrowest point the teams visit throughout the year. The castle and the skyscrapers are soon behind us as we see the famous red arrows appear as we hurtle it down into the Monaco Tunnel. And we're off now to the S's in Suzuka, where the pink blossom blows across the track. Turning right, and we head down under and into the Brabham corner of Melbourne, a high-speed corner that requires precision and a cool head in the Australian heat. Before navigating the Senna S, named after the legendary Ayrton Senna, we head flat out to the finish line at Interlagos, where many Formula One legends have been crowned champion by the chequered flag. Well, that was quite the lap, and I reckon the top drivers would absolutely love it. But what did you think? Let us know, and don't forget, you can see all of the iconic tracks from across the globe this season, exclusively live on Sky Sports.